Hey guys, welcome to another Iceberg video. Today's video is a bit special because it is the most requested topic for me to do an Iceberg on. And so this Christmas season, I'm giving you guys what you've been asking for. After Christmas, because uh, yeah, there's no way this video is coming out before or on Christmas. So uh, sorry, but it's here now, so that's cool. But yes, today I'll be going over the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, talking about weird lore, weird projects, cancelled projects, controversies, weird storylines, etc. I hope you all enjoy, and if you do, maybe leave a like, and uh, maybe even comment below. Maybe even subscribe, because I got plenty of icebergs coming out, and I've already made a bunch of icebergs you can go and watch right now. Like ones based on Marvel, DC, Halo, Star Wars, Godzilla, Lego, Cyberpunk, Gears of War, Jurassic Park, etc. So after this video, maybe check out those. Or don't, I can't control you. So with all that being said, let's begin. TMNT 2 Despite TMNT 2007 doing a pretty solid job at the box office and getting a decent fan reception, no sequel to TMNT was ever released. However, there were plans for one. We know that TMNT 2 would have involved the Turtles traveling to Japan and facing off against Shredder, Karai, and Michelangelo. Yes, Mikey. It turns out that Michelangelo was going to defect from the group to the Foot Clan after feeling rejected by his brothers. And the last thing we know about this film's plot is that it was going to be a loose adaptation of the comic arc City at War. As to why the film never got made, it's because the studio behind the film, Imagi, went bankrupt after the release of the film Astro Boy in 2009, which was a critical and financial failure. Bebop and Rocksteady vs. Toka and Razar During development of Secret of the Ooze, the studio behind the film, New Line Cinema, wanted Bebop and Rocksteady to appear in the film. However, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman, the creators of the TMNT, really didn't want them in the film. Peter Laird even said, quote, It's not so much that I disliked the characters so intensely, but more that I found their constant one-note shtick in the first animated series extremely annoying and silly to the point of being stupid. However, because the studio really wanted the pair in the film, a compromise was created. Instead of Bebop and Rocksteady, the film would see the debut of two original characters, Toka and Razar. And since then, they've appeared in various different shows, games, and comics. Street Fighter VI On August 8th, 2023, the TMNT crossed over into the world of Street Fighter, but not as guest characters. Instead, you can make your player characters wear TMNT costumes and accessories. Not only that, but various stamps and emotes themed around the Turtles were added into the game. There was even a temporary TMNT clothing store added to the game that you could visit. This crossover was a bit controversial, as not only were players annoyed that they couldn't actually play as the Turtles, but also, in order to unlock all of the TMNT content in the game, you would need to spend $100. The Red Sky Seasons After the mixed critical reception to Secrets of the Ooze, and the overwhelmingly negative reception to TMNT 3, along with the popularity of darker kids' cartoons, it was decided to change up the original Turtles cartoon. While the series would still continue to have some goofy elements, the show was changed to be much more serious. Not only was the writing more serious, but so was the art, as the show was much darker in color, and many of the characters received redesigns. Side characters like Irma and Vern were also written out of the show completely, and the Channel 6 building was flat out destroyed. And to top it all off, the sky was often colored red, just to show how serious the show was. These last three seasons, seasons 8, 9, and 10, 
have since been nicknamed the Red Sky Seasons by fans. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles This is probably the most famous TMNT controversy. When the original cartoon began airing in the UK, the show's name was changed to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. This was because in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a bit of controversy in the UK surrounding the term ninja and their weapons, like nunchucks. You see, the UK government were extremely against violence in TV shows aimed at children, so nunchucks, ninjas, etc. were deemed too dangerous. But swords and size are fine, I guess. This would actually be the reason as to why Michelangelo would retire his nunchucks in favor of the turtle line grappling hook in the fourth season of the cartoon. Last thing I'll mention is that Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles wasn't just a different name for the show. In fact, the episodes that aired under that title were changed. Scenes with Michelangelo's nunchucks were removed completely and the word ninja was actually muted at a dialogue. The Last Ronin Releasing from October 2020 to April of 2022, The Last Ronin is a five-issue miniseries set in a dystopian New York City. Written by Peter Laird, Kevin Eastman, and Tom Waltz, the story focuses on the last surviving member of the TMNT, who is now known as the Ronin, as he works together with April O'Neil and her daughter to take down the corrupt government holding New York City prisoner. This government is run by Hiroto, the son of Karai. Normally, I'd go further into detail about the storyline, but because of how critically acclaimed it is and how recent it is, I won't spoil any more of the plot. It was so well received that two sequels were made, the Last Ronin, Lost Years, which serves as a sequel and a prequel, and The Last Ronin 2, Re-Evolution. There's even a video game adaptation of the story being developed by Black Forest Games. The third Michael Bay film. The Michael Bay produced TMNT films were originally intended to span an entire trilogy with Megan Fox and the Turtle voice actors, Noel Fisher, Jeremy Howard, Alan Richson, and Johnny Knoxville, all siding on for three films. Although, Knoxville was replaced in the second film with Pete Plaschik. But anyways, why didn't a third film happen? Well, it's because Out of the Shadows was a box office bomb making only $245 million with a budget of $135 million. And that's not counting the marketing costs. While most people consider this film to be far superior than the 2014 original, the film wasn't a big critical hit either. And so, plans for a third film were cancelled. The only plot element we know about this third film is that Baxter Stockman would have probably returned, and mutated into his fly form. However, this was also just speculation from Tyler Perry, so it might not even be true. Street Sharks Because of the insane success of the TMNT during the late 80s and early 90s, many companies created toy lines to compete. And one of the most famous examples of this was the Street Sharks. Releasing from September 1994 to May of 1997, The Street Sharks was an animated series that lasted 40 episodes that spanned three seasons. And along with the cartoon, there was a toy line created by Mattel. The plot of the show was centered around The Street Sharks, a group of superhero animal mutants created by Dr. Bolton, who uh, hardly shows up in the show. The team of shark mutants face off against Dr. Paradigm and his various mutant animal henchmen, while also working with characters like the Dino Avengers, El Sordo, and the President of the United States. Releasing alongside the cartoon and toy line was a short-lived comic series by Archie Comics. After the show stopped airing in 1997, the Street Sharks haven't really done anything. There's been no new shows, comics, or toys. 
The franchise only lives on in parody media like Robot Chicken and is only remembered for its very blatant attempt at stealing the TMNT spotlight. Deleted Scenes Like with most films, the TMNT films have their fair share of deleted scenes. Here's a few of them. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990, a decent amount of scenes involving Casey Jones were cut. For starters, a scene towards the beginning of the film where he'd be shown watching the news was cut. There were also several scenes between him and April that were cut, including one where he tries to help her with a stuck car door. There was also a scene of Shredder sparring with the Foot Clan that was cut. In this scene, he would have actually defeated all of the Foot Clan while sitting down. There was also a scene where the turtles play hot potato with an apple. Basically, whoever is holding the apple has to defend themselves against the other turtles while they try and take a bite out of it. And finally, there was a scene in which Leonardo trains blind, which inspires the other turtles to do so as well. This would have happened while they were at the farm. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Secrets of the Ooze, Originally, there was going to be a line in the film explaining where Casey Jones was during the events of the film. It was also going to be originally be revealed that the Secrets of the Ooze is that it comes from space. Yeah, the Secrets of the Ooze in the movie called The Secrets of the Ooze got cut. There is one other cut scene, but it goes with a cut storyline that I'll talk about later in its own entry. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, the only deleted scene that I was able to find any information about was a scene of Michelangelo not wearing his bandana or his samurai helmet. Although, honestly, this might be in the film. There was also a line that was cut from the film that explained where Casey Jones was during the events of the second film. Yeah, they did this twice. Also, while not technically a deleted scene, there was a banner of Usagi created for the film, and was put on set. However, in the final film, you can't actually see it. For TMNT 2007, there was a scene where Casey Jones proposes to April O'Neil after receiving Raphael's motorcycle as a gift that was cut. This would have been a culmination of an entire subplot that was cut from the film. There was also a scene cut where Splinter would be introduced into the film when Michelangelo gives him a slice of birthday cake from one of the birthday parties he was working at. And uh, speaking of birthday parties, Michelangelo working as a birthday party performer was supposed to go on for much longer. We would also see him driving the turtle van. And finally, the fight between Leonardo and Raphael would have started as a fist fight before the two switched their weapons. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014, originally, there would be a scene in which April and Raphael are walking around New York City, and in order to disguise himself, Raphael would wear a trench coat as a homage to the multiple other pieces of TMNT media that do this. Also, the scene in the elevator right before the fight with Shredder was shortened. Originally, the turtles would begin to dance. There was also a scene that was cut where April and Vern would fight a few members of the Foot Clan. This would have happened during the lair fight, which means that Vern was going to meet the turtles well before the scene with Raphael in the van. And finally, various scenes involving Karai were cut, including a scene where she fights April and Vern. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, Originally, there was supposed to be a scene in which April would meet Rita, the head of Channel 6. Rita was played by Judith Hogue, who played April O'Neil in the original 1990 film. There was also a scene that was cut in which April talks to Vern while Vern rambles on about how people are paying him $200 for bags of his air. There was also a scene in which Casey Jones and April O'Neil talk about their careers that was cut. And finally, there was a scene in which Casey Jones tries to convince April to kiss him in order to disguise themselves that was cut. And finally, for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, Shredder, The Rat King, and Baxter Stockman were all at one point planned to be the film's main antagonist. 
with a leaked storyboard showing that April was researching and tracking sightings of the Rat King. Baxter Stockman was also planned to be a teacher at the high school where he'd turn into Superfly by the end of the film. The Turtles would have also originally started going to high school at the very end of Act 1. Ninja Turtles – The Next Mutation Releasing from September of 1997 to May of 1998 and lasting 26 episodes, Ninja Turtles – The Next Mutation is what many people think of when they think of failed TMNT projects. This was a live-action show produced by Saban Entertainment, which basically means this show had a very similar tone and style to the Power Rangers franchise. In fact, there was even a crossover episode with Power Rangers in Space. The show featured the Turtles facing off against various original foes, like the Dragon Lord, a Yeti named Silver, a vampire named Van Mee, and a Craven the Hunter type character named Simon Bonesteel. Shredder was also there, but was quickly killed off within the first couple of episodes. But these villains aren't the most notable thing about the show. That would be Venus, the female member of the TMNT. She was different from the other Turtles, not just because of her gender, but also because she was raised as a shinobi instead of a ninja. She was also extremely controversial, but I'll get into that in her own entry in a little bit. The show was also pretty notable for having some really weird lore decisions. For example, the turtles in the show aren't blood-related, and the turtles' weapons are all different. Leonardo's got a double-bladed sword, Raphael's size can now combine to make a staff, Donatello's got a metal staff, and Mikey's got a pair of tomfas. The last thing I'll mention is, like the original cartoon, this show would get its name changed in the UK and several other European countries, as the word ninja was still controversial. So the show went on to be renamed Hero Turtles – The Next Mutation. The Blue Door In August of 2012, an early draft of the TMNT 2014 script was leaked. Written by Josh Applebaum and Andre Nimick, The Blue Door is probably the most controversial piece of TMNT media ever. This is the famous TMNT are actually aliens script. You see, in March 2012, Michael Bay revealed that the film would be titled Ninja Turtles, and the turtles would be aliens. This made people really upset. But it only got worse when the script was leaked. The plot of the film centered around Casey Jones, who would be the film's protagonist. He'd be a security guard who would discover the alien turtles who would come to Earth via a dimensional portal. Splinter is also there, and he's also an alien. Casey helps out the turtles alongside his girlfriend April O'Neil, but they're having some relationship problems. And so is Michelangelo, because the woman he's in love with is back in his turtle dimension. Yeah, he wasn't going to be the goofball of the film. That, for some reason, was Raphael's role. But what about Shredder? What was his role? Well, he was also an alien who could grow blades from his body. He's working undercover in the US government as Colonel Schrader, and he leads the Foot, an elite Black Ops unit. But Shredder wouldn't be the only villain in the film. Krang would be there too, and he was the one who killed the TMNT's parents. He rules over the turtle dimension inside his Technodrome. But why did he kill the turtle's parents? Well, because the turtles were the chosen ones and were destined to defeat Krang. Oh, and uh, Bebop and Rocksteady are also there, and they even fight Splinter. The film ends with the turtles all going their own ways. In response to the script being leaked, Michael Bay stated that this script was an extremely early draft, created before he had even gotten involved in the project. However, regardless of this, The Blue Door remains extremely controversial. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 
Originally, the original TMNT trilogy was going to have a fourth installment titled The Next Mutation. Uh, no relation to the live action show. Beginning production in 1994, this film would have featured the four turtles and Splinter undergoing mutations that turned them into some really bizarre creatures. Leonardo would gain the ability to morph his skin into a chrome-like surface that could protect him from literally anything. Donatello was given telekinetic and telepathic powers, but in turn would have become almost blind, requiring him to use vision-enhancing goggles. Raphael would have morphed into a turtle-velociraptor hybrid. He'd gain large claws on his hands and feet, Michelangelo would have gained the ability to morph into a human form. He would also start wearing clothes. And a Splinter would become extremely muscular and gain large claws. And with his new abilities, he would actually go out and fight with the Turtles. However, he would only have a limited control over himself, so he would occasionally freak out and attack random stuff. As for the other characters, Super Shredder would have returned, and the Turtles would have to face off against him alongside new foes named Fang and Spider. Spider would have also received a nano machine upgrade at some point. But the Turtles would be backed up by Casey Jones, who would now have the ability to punch people with electricity, and a fifth member of the TMNT, Kirby. Named after Jack Kirby, this turtle would have been an even more hardcore and tough version of Raphael. His main weapons would have been a pair of Bowie knives. There was also Evil April O'Neil. It's not known whether or not this was the main universe April who became evil or was being brainwashed, or like this was like an alternate universe version of her, or even like an evil clone. There's like absolutely nothing known about her. There were also some other characters created for the film, like Bugman and Talbot. Anyways, this film never ended up happening for one big reason. TMNT was a box office disappointment and a critical failure, so it was decided to shelve the film series. We wish you a turtle Christmas. Released in October of 1994, We Wish You a Turtle Christmas is one of my favorite pieces of TMNT media. Directed by Larry Osborne on a budget of $5,000, Turtle Christmas is a 25-minute long straight-to-VHS special that involves the four turtles getting ready for Christmas in the only way they can. By singing, shopping, inviting children into their home, and harassing a charity Santa. The plot is about the turtles realizing they somehow forgot to get Splinter a gift, and so, go up to the city to get him one. Except they don't just get one gift. They give him 12. These include an April O'Neil autograph, some yellow yo-yos, a pair of sneakers, a silk kimono, a frisbee, a manhole cover, video games, chopsticks, neckties, comic books, skateboards, and a framed pepperoni pizza. Splinter seems pretty hyped about all this, though, so I guess it's all good. Overall, it's a 25-minute long cringe fest that I absolutely adore and watch every Christmas. The last thing I want to mention is that the director of the film, Larry Osborne, is the brother to Barry Osborne, who was an executive producer on the 2013 Great Gatsby film, The Meg, the original Child's Play, the live-action Mulan film, Dick Tracy, the original Matrix, and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The White Shredder Controversy In the 2014 film, William Fitchner plays a character named Eric Sachs. However, originally, he was supposed to have a dual role of sorts, as Eric Sachs was originally going to be revealed to be the Shredder. This wasn't an early script idea either, a ton of scenes of this version of the movie were filmed. When this twist was released to the public, fans were not happy, with many of them saying the film was whitewashing Shredder. As in most pieces of TMNT media, Shredder was Asian. Yes, there were times where he was voiced by somebody who wasn't Asian, 
most notably in the original cartoon, but in-universe the character was still Asian. In response to this backlash, it was decided to hire a new actor, Tohoru Masamune, who would now be playing Shredder. But a new actor meant a ton of reshoots had to be done, and so extensive reshoots were filmed that removed a bunch of scenes from the film, including pretty much every scene of Sax being Shredder, outside of a few scenes that had new dialogue ADR'd in. However, despite all of this, tie-in material for the film still kept the original twist, most notably the 2014 video game adaptation that was released for the Nintendo 3DS. Weird Villains So in all of the Marvel and DC superhero icebergs I've made, I go over some weird villains. And I was going to do the same with this iceberg, but weird villains are kind of a staple of TMNT. There's so many of them, and they're made pretty weird on purpose. So instead of going over a bunch of them over the course of the video, here's a quick rundown of 10 of them. Pizza Face is a giant blob of pizza who first appeared in the TMNT 2012 episode, Pizza Face. Originally, he was just a dude named Antonio who ran a pizza place. However, this all changed when, like an idiot, he tasted some mutagen he found. This morphed him into a pizza monster who could create living pizzas and mind control people. Percival Pifflecoot is a supervillain who first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode Michelangelo the Sacred Turtle. He's this white dude who dresses up like an ancient Egyptian in an attempt at using the turtle's eye ruby to become a modern day pharaoh who would rule over the entire world. The Glob Father is a giant sentient amoeba from Dimension X who first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode Mobster from Dimension X. He's a gross mobster-like villain who can turn people into amoebas. There's Winston Fripp, aka Kronos, who first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode Split Second. He doesn't have any powers, he's just a criminal who was driven insane by the sounds of a clock he was trapped near. There's AJ Howard, who's a billionaire who's secretly a slug mutant planning on taking over the entire world with an army of hypnotized mutants. He first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode Dirk Savage Mutant Hunter. There's G. Clef, who first appears in the 80s cartoon episode Leonardo Lightens Up. His whole thing is that he plays music that's so loud it demolishes entire buildings. He does this through instruments and speakers. They aren't magic or anything, they're just like normal instruments and speakers though. There's Mr. Touch and Mr. Go, first appearing in the 2003 series episode, Touch and Go. They're a criminal duo that gain superpowers every time they fist bump. Go gets super speed powers, while Touch gets super strength. The Pizza Monsters are a race of alien monsters from Dimension X that first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode, The Case of the Killer Pizzas. They're given to Shredder by Krang to use to defeat the Turtles, and are basically just Xenomorphs. They look like Xenomorphs, they hatch from meatball eggs shaped like Xenomorph eggs, and act like Xenomorphs. They're just Xenomorphs. Mutagen Man, aka Seymour Guts, is easily the most well-known on this list. First appearing in the 80s cartoon episode Enter Mutagen Man, he's a disgusting brain monster that lives in a robotic body filled with mutagen. He's since appeared in the 2012 series and the IDW comics. And finally, there's Og, a strange Pee Wee Herman inspired character from Dimension Z, who first appeared in the 80s cartoon episode Mr. Og Goes to Town. He can create some pretty advanced illusions and has an addiction to eating porcelain. He can also travel through realities whenever he wants to. Mutant Turtles Superman Legend Directed by Shunji Oga and released on May 21st, 1996, Mutant Turtles Superman Legend is a two-episode OVA series that serves as a spin-off of sorts to the 1980s cartoon. 
Created by Ashi Productions, this two-parter served as not just a spin-off to the cartoon, but also a tie-in for the TMNT toy lines, Super Mutants, and Metal Mutation. Taking place sometime before the Red Sky Seasons, the Turtles help out a spirit named Cry's Mu, who was trapped inside of a stone inside of a temple in the Muta Kingdom. As a thank you, she gives the Turtles the ability to transform themselves into superforms for three minutes at a time. But they're not the only ones who get these upgrades, as Shredder discovers the Dark Muta Stones, which allows him, Bebop, and Rocksteady to transform into superforms as well. So the two sides battle it out until eventually, the Turtles merge into one being called the Turtle Saint and defeat Shredder. Pretty crazy, but it gets crazier. In the second episode, the Turtles receive some magic armor that allows them to temporarily transform themselves into animals. While there were only two episodes, there were three more stories set in this universe. From July 1995 to December of the same year, three prequel manga were released. Well, the first chapter was a prequel. The second seems to be set between the two episodes, and the third and final chapter is an alternate version of Episode 2. Obviously, despite it being a spin-off to the original cartoon, this OVA series is set in an alternate continuity. A continuity that has never been released outside of Japan. There have been fan subs of the episodes, but to this day, the OVAs have never been officially released outside its home country. Venus. Created for the next mutation, Venus was the first fifth member of the TMNT. Like I said earlier, she was raised as a shinobi instead of a traditional ninja after being rescued from the sewers by a man named Chung Ai, who brought her to China to live with him for 18 years. However, the show really didn't understand what shinobi is. As in the show, it's portrayed as magic, when in reality, it's just another word for ninja. But that's the least controversial thing about her. You see, the mere fact that she exists is a controversy. Fans weren't very happy with her in the show, and to this day, there's a very large part of the fanbase that never wants to see her again. Especially since Venus was also created as a potential love interest for the Turtles. Yeah, because they're not blood-related, Saban flirted with the idea of the Turtles being into her. This was something that Mirage Comics and the creators of the TMNT were not a fan of. Because of all this, Venus was absent from Turtles media for over two decades, though there would be some Easter eggs relating to her. However, this all changed in March of 2022, with issue 127 of the IDW TMNT comic. This issue reintroduced Venus to the TMNT franchise, but in an extremely different way. You see, instead of being a long-lost member of the TMNT, in this universe, Venus was originally a human turned into a mutant frog by a mutagen bomb, and was now a member of the Punk Frogs. She was one day captured by a man named Dr. Barlow, who performed experiments on her, eventually turning her into a Frankenstein-like turtle. She'd eventually be rescued by Donatello and Clyde, a member of the Punk Frogs, where she would then live with the mutant Bludgeon for a while, and eventually the two would create their own ninja clan. Oh, and uh, she's also not actually named Venus this time around. Her actual name is Bonnie. She's only referred to as Venus because she was part of Barlow's Venus Project. Anyways, this new version of the character has actually been received quite positively. Hopefully now, Venus can be a proper recurring character in the franchise. Daredevil While there's never been an official crossover between Daredevil and the TMNT, the two franchises are actually connected. You see, in the very first issue of TMNT, Splinter witnesses a child saving a blind man from being run over by a truck. A vial of mutagen then flies out of the truck and smashes into the kid's head, right next to his eyes. And then the vial of mutagen goes on to smash into a fishbowl containing the turtles. 
the turtles and the vile mutagen then fall into the sewer, and thus the TMNT were created. While never referred to by name, the kid who saved the old man was actually intended to be Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Now, was this done to imply that Daredevil was going to show up later in the comics? Well, no. This little reference to Daredevil's origin story was done because the original TMNT comic was very much a parody of comics around that time. This isn't even the only Daredevil parody. The Foot Clan is actually a parody of The Hand, one of Daredevil's main antagonists. Splinter himself is also a parody of Daredevil's mentor, Stick. So while the two franchises have never crossed over, unless you want to count Fortnite, Daredevil is still very important to the TMNT franchise. Power Rangers I already briefly mentioned the crossover episodes between Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation and Power Rangers in Space, but those special episodes wouldn't be the last time the Heroes in a Half Shell teamed up with a bunch of teenagers with attitude. In 2015, because both TMNT and Power Rangers were airing on Nickelodeon, a crossover fighting game made in Flash was released on Nick.com, called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles vs. Power Rangers Ultimate Hero Clash, the game was a crossover between the 2012 TMNT series and multiple different Power Ranger series. The original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Power Rangers Megaforce, Power Rangers in Space, and Power Rangers Dino Chargers. The game was pretty popular, and so in 2017, a sequel was created where the 2012 TMNT characters would face off against Power Rangers Ninja Steel. And uh, only Ninja Steel for some reason. The next crossover between the two franchises would be in 2019, where from December of 2019 to June of 2020, the TMNT would fight and later team up with the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the IDW crossover miniseries Mighty Morphin Power Rangers slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Written by Ryan Parrott, the miniseries sees the Green Ranger, Tommy Oliver, joining up with the Foot Clan in order to save his childhood friend, Tyler. But Tyler is a bit of a dick and betrayed Tommy, resulting in Shredder stealing his Ranger Morpher and becoming the Green Ranger. Also, the Rangers get their connections to the Morphing Grid severed, so the TMNT in April have to turn into Power Rangers in order to take on Shredder. The crossover was pretty popular, and resulted in a sequel releasing from December of 2022 to May of 2023. This crossover sees more TMNT and Power Rangers villains entering the scene. There's also some character changes, like April becoming the Yellow Ranger, and the Power Rangers undergoing a pretty wild transformation. But I won't spoil much more than that, because this series wrapped up earlier this year. So if you're interested, go check it out. Food tie-ins? Because the Ninja Turtles are obsessed with pizza, there's been a ton of tie-ins with fast food pizza places, like Pizza Hut. Seriously, there is a ton of TMNT and Pizza Hut collabs. But it's not just pizza. The TMNT have had a crazy amount of food promotions over the years. From cereal, ice cream, cookies, pork rinds, Chef Boyardee, Jell-O, candy, hostess pies, to even hot dogs. TMNT might actually be the franchise with the most food tie-ins. Uh, minus, like, Star Wars, Marvel, or DC. Fortnite. I briefly made a joke about it earlier, but, uh, yeah. In December of 2023, the four Ninja Turtles, along with April O'Neil, were added into Fortnite. And if I had to guess, Shredder, Bebop, and Rocksteady will probably come out at some point down the line. Instead of the Turtles in April being based on an existing TMNT comic, cartoon, or film, they're all original designs. But yeah, now you can have Michelangelo do the Dougie with Solid Snake, Michael Myers, Alan Wake, Lewis Hamilton, Omni-Man, Son Gohan, The Batman Who Laughs, Shodo Tudoroki, Sakura Huruno, and Peter Griffin. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after 
dirty mess again. They live in the dark. Radical group. And they only come out when it's time to eat. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pasta from Chef Boyardee. Delicious pasta shaped like Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. Turtle power! Kids, I told you, you can only have your turtles in the kitchen. New Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pasta. Why, thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. We now return to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up. So Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, April, Rocksteady, and Shredder all appear in the Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl games. Although, for some reason, the Turtles got split up between the two games for some stupid reason. Luckily, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl isn't the only Smash Bros. clone the Turtles appear in. If you want to play as all four Turtles, Shredder, and April in a Smash Bros. clone, all you gotta do is play the game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up. Sorry Rocksteady, you didn't make the cut. Released in September of 2009 for the Nintendo Wii and the PlayStation 2, Smash Up is basically a TMNT Smash Bros. game. While on the PS2, the Wii version is the definitive version of the game having 16 playable characters. There's the four Turtles, Shredder, April, Karai, Splinter, Casey Jones, Fugitoid, the Ninja Rabbit, the Splinter Rabbit, and the Raving Rabbit. All your favorite TMNT characters. Yeah, because the game was published by Ubisoft, three different Rabbit variations appear as guest characters. Another weird thing about the game is that it has a bit of an identity problem. You see, the game uses designs from both the 2003 cartoon and TMNT 2007, though it also has the 2003 cartoon's voice cast. So it's both a TMNT 2003 game and a TMNT 2007 game. As for the gameplay, it plays like your standard Smash Bros. clone. It also has a story mode. Well, kinda. Co-written by Peter Laird, the story is pretty simple. The TMNT host a tournament, and after that's done, Shredder, Karai, and the Foot Clan start causing some chaos by kidnapping Fugitoid so they can have it build them a teleporter. The Turtles spring into action and beat up the bad guys. It's a pretty simple little story that they didn't really need to make, but they did, so props. Overall, Smash Up may be a Smash clone forgotten to time by the general public, but it's a pretty fun game. Not amazing or anything like that, but probably one of the better Smash clones. Baxter Stockman in the 2014 film Leonardo and Shredder weren't the only characters who were recasted between the 2014 film and Out of the Shadows. So was Baxter Stockman. Although, you'd be forgiven for not knowing that Baxter Stockman was even in the 2014 film. And that's because nearly every single scene with him was cut. The only scene to include him in the final cut is this. Played by K. Todd Freeman, Baxter Stockman was originally going to have a bigger role in the film. Though because Freeman couldn't make it to the film's reshoots, pretty much all of his scenes were removed, though luckily he was still credited in the film. TMNT 3 While most fans know that a sequel to TMNT 2007 was cancelled, fewer fans know that TMNT 2007 was supposed to be the beginning of an entire trilogy. There's not a ton known about this cancelled third TMNT film, in fact, the only things we know about it is that the Triceratons, the Technodrone, and Dimension X would have all been introduced. And somehow, Donatello would have been responsible for all of this happening. Besides that, nothing is known about this film. Breaking Bad In issue 27 of IDW's TMNT comic, released in October of 2013, 
both Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, from the Breaking Bad franchise, appear in a crowd shot when Shredder is giving a speech. Walter White even appears in another panel. There's not really much else for me to say here. Turtles in Time Reshelled Released in August of 2009 for the Xbox 360 and in September of 2009 for the PS3, Turtles in Time Reshelled is a remake of the original Turtles in Time video game. For those that don't know, Turtles in Time is often regarded as the best TMNT game ever made. Well, at least until Shredder's Revenge came out. Apparently that game's amazing. Anyways, because it was a remake of a very popular game, the game had some pretty big expectations to live up to. And it failed to live up to literally any of them. Yeah, the game wasn't very well received, with critics and players stating that the game just didn't really have any replay value. And while the ability to play online was pretty cool, you couldn't join a game that was already in progress. Also, the game's visuals received some criticism. Some liked the new style, while others thought it looked really cheap. Also, the game didn't remake any of the SNES original levels. Overall, it was kind of a failure. Maybe it would receive some kind of cult following nowadays, but it was never given the chance, as in June 2011, less than two years after its release, the game was delisted from online stores. And since the game didn't receive any physical copies, it's now pretty much impossible to play this game unless you bought it before it was taken off of online stores. Mona Lisa the Turtle Mona Lisa is well known as a human-turned-mutant salamander. However, she wasn't originally going to be a salamander. Instead, she was going to be the first ever female mutant turtle. So why didn't this happen? Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman You see, neither of them liked the idea of Mona Lisa being a female turtle with Peter Laird even saying in the letter pages of issue 18 of their TMNT comic, quote, What many people do not know was that she was originally supposed to be a female mutant turtle. But Kevin and I put our foot down. This was back when we both agreed that a female turtle was a lame, stupid, creatively bankrupt idea. And they changed her to some kind of lizard. Though they must have vetoed this idea very late into the character's creation, because remnants of Mona Lisa's turtle origins still remain in her character design, as Mona Lisa's head and feet are both extremely similar to the TMNT's heads and feet. Original Casting Sadly, I wasn't able to find much information on actors who were considered for roles in the TMNT films or actors who auditioned for the TMNT films, I was only able to find information on four characters, one from the original trilogy and three from the Michael Bay produced films. For the original April O'Neil, Nicole Kidman, Sean Young, Jennifer Beals, Melina Griffin, Brooke Shields, Sandra Bullock, Marissa Tomei, Winona Ryder, and Lorraine Bracco were considered for the role. For the reboot April, Anna Kendrick, Elizabeth Olsen, and Jane Levy were considered for the role. For the reboot Casey Jones, Joe Mangaliello was considered for the role. And finally, for reboot Rocksteady, CM Punk was considered for the role. Mutants in Manhattan Released in May of 2016 for the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC, Mutants in Manhattan is a hack-and-slash game developed by Platinum Games. The game follows the four turtles battling Shredder, Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, Karai, Armagon, and Wingnut throughout New York City. And uh, that's kind of it. Yeah, there's a plot, but it's a simple the Foot Clan is trying to take over and or destroy New York City type plotline. So why is the game notable? Well, besides the fact that it's made by Platinum Games, one of the most well-known hack-and-slash developers, the game had an extremely short life. Only seven months. 
You see, the game was published by Activision, who partnered with Platinum Games to make three licensed video games. A Legend of Korra game that apparently no one likes, Transformers Devastation, which was pretty good, and this game, which was easily the most mixed of the trilogy. And in January of 2017, Activision lost the rights to make TMNT games, and so, the game had to be delisted from every online storefront. Luckily though, this game did receive a physical release, so you can still play it. As for Mutants in Manhattan's gameplay, the game allowed for four-player co-op, but you could also play it alone, with the game's AI taking control over the other turtles. Although, while there is co-op, it's only online. There's no offline co-op. Because apparently, it would have prevented the game from reaching 60 FPS. Although, the game still didn't reach 60 FPS, so I guess it was for nothing. But hey, there's a pizza-eating minigame, so that's pretty funny. Like I said earlier, this game had a pretty mixed reception, with a lot of critics and players complaining that the game's level design was really boring. The game itself was also extremely short, and a lot of people didn't care for the game's cel-shaded art style, though some did quite like it. Peter Laird vs. Venus Nobody hates the character of Venus more than Peter Laird. He hates her so much that I decided that this hatred needed to be its own entry. The reason why Venus wasn't in any piece of media following the next mutation was because of Laird's hatred for the character. He refused to let her show up in anything, or even be mentioned. For example, when Kevin Monroe, the director and writer of TMNT 2007, was given rules about the franchise, he revealed that one of these rules given to him said that you cannot mention Venus. Monroe even saying, quote, You can't even joke about that with Peter. It's just one of those things he hates with a passion. Another example is when after the next mutation ended, various original stories were uploaded to the TMNT's official website. These stories were in-universe journal entries that were written by the Turtles, and served as a semi-season 2 of sorts. These would remain on the site for years, until Kevin Eastman sold his half of TMNT to Peter Laird. And after that, Peter Laird removed every single journal and letter written by Venus. But now you might be wondering, why would Kevin Eastman keep Venus's letters on the website for so long? Doesn't he hate her too? Well, actually, no. Kevin Eastman actually likes Venus as a character, and has said before that he hopes that she can make a comeback one day. And luckily for him, she did. Rise Season 3 Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the shortest-lived TMNT series, minus the next mutation. However, it was originally supposed to go on for three seasons. But after years of Nickelodeon screwing over production on the show, the series was cancelled. Though a film was released to finish up the series. We don't really know a ton about this cancelled third season. Besides the fact that the Krang were intended to be the main antagonists, alongside the Rat King. Season 2 was also forced to be shortened by Nickelodeon, so a bunch of plans for the second season got cut. These plans included the reveal that Baron Draxum made more mutant turtles. And two of these turtles would have eventually appeared, both of them being female turtles, and one of them would even be Draxum's bodyguard. Big Mama would have also been a major threat, and taken over the Council of Heads. Cassandra Jones would have also been April's rival, and this relationship would have been explored in multiple episodes. And finally, there was going to be a flashback episode showing how April met the Turtles. Now, while these were cut Season 2 plans, it's entirely possible that if a third season were made, some of these ideas would have been used. The Forever War The Forever War is a cancelled five-issue storyline that would have began in issue 71 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures in September of 1995. Art was created for the storyline, but it was cancelled. 
though issue 71 and issue 72 would still be released. But now we're a two-part prequel story about the Turtles as kids. This storyline would have served as a finale to the comic, with the Turtles having their final confrontation with Shredder. But they'd also have help from the TMNT from the future. Other characters like the Rat King, Scumbag, and Golani would have also returned in some capacity. So why was this storyline cancelled? Well, the story was deemed too dark for Archie Comics. One of the writers in the comic, Steve Murphy, told an Archie publisher that this storyline would have seen the return of Shredder, who would have been extremely brutal and a totalitarian. This bothered Archie Comics a lot, and so the story was cancelled. Murphy would try and release the story in 2005, 2007, and 2009, but it never saw a release, with the 2009 release being cancelled by Nickelodeon. Coming Out of Their Shells Coming Out of Their Shells was a live concert and stage show running from 1990 to 1992. The stage show told the story of the four turtles as they battle against Shredder, who wants to steal all the world's music. Because he hates music. So much so that he sings about it. The show is pretty famous for its cheesy and extremely silly tone, along with its costumes, some of which weren't all that bad, while others weren't all that good. It's also well known for its music, which honestly, yeah, it's pretty good. Like the song Count On Us is unironically fire. Anyways, this concert show actually has some lore to it. It turns out the Turtles are obsessed with music and have created their own band. This is in part because Splinter told them it was a good idea. So the Turtles start touring the United States instead of fighting crime. This annoys Shredder, so he works with Baxter Stockman to steal all the world's music, while also kidnapping April and murdering a dude. Yeah, there's this dude named Kip Reading, who I assume is meant to be a Vern stand-in, and he ends up being electrocuted to death by Shredder, but nobody really cares. I mean, the Turtles flat out threatened to kill him at one point, so they especially didn't care. You bunch of weenies? What? Who are you calling a weenie, man? Oh, I'm gonna kill you right now. The very first concert was actually aired on pay-per-view, and this airing was later released as a VHS, so thankfully it's been archived forever. Now anyone can watch this masterpiece. Not only that, but a making of documentary was also released. Although it's not actually a documentary, it's a mockumentary where the Turtles talk about how their band came together. Before I move on to the next entry, here's a clip of Shredder roasting an eight-year-old. What's your name? Peter! Peter? Is that your sister? Friend? Cousin! Cousin? What's the matter, couldn't get a date? Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue Released in April of 1990, Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue is a 30-minute long PSA special about a kid named Michael who really wants to do drugs. He wants to do them so badly, he steals money from his younger brother for the dreaded, evil drug known as marijuana. The Devil's Lettuce he thinks he's being sneaky, but fails to realize his brother apparently has every cartoon from the late 80s and early 90s watching over him like a guardian angel. So the Smurfs, Slimer, Winnie the Pooh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Alf, the DuckTale Kids, Kermit the Frog, Garfield, Bugs Bunny, and more show up and beat the crap out of him. And by beat the crap out of him, I mean they just teach him that drugs are bad. The reason why I'm talking about it on the TMNT iceberg is because Michelangelo is one of the many cartoon characters sent in to harass Michael. And who sends these cartoon characters to harass Michael? President George H.W. Bush. Anyways, yeah, Michelangelo shows up and tells Michael that drugs are bad. Insert joke here about how Michelangelo would totally do drugs. Back to the Sewers 2. The 2003 TMNT series lasted seven seasons, however, there were talks about an eighth season. 
However, this season would never end up being made, because of two reasons. The first was by this point in the show's run, it had some pretty low ratings. And the second reason was that Nickelodeon had recently purchased the rights to the franchise. So anyways, Season 8, or as some fans refer to it as, Back to the Sewers 2, was cancelled. Thankfully, we do know some plot elements that would have been in this season. The big focus of this season would have been the Shredder Wars arc, which would have seen Cyber Shredder, Utrum Shredder, and Demon Shredder battling it out for domination. This season would have also seen Serling returning to his own time, and Khan's origin would have been explored. Stranger Things? Releasing from July 2023 to October of the same year, written by Cameron Chittuck, this crossover is exactly what it sounds like, a crossover between Stranger Things and TMNT. Notably, the TMNT are based heavily on the Mirage Comics versions of the characters, even having the same red bandanas. The story sees the Stranger Things kids, aka the least interesting part of the show, travel to New York City in 1985, where they meet up with the Turtles, April O'Neil, Casey Jones, and Splinter. And together, they got a deal with some crazy upside-down show, I mean upside-down monsters. Baxter Stockman's also here too, and he's made a bunch of cyborg demo dogs. Basically, demo gorgons turned into robot dogs. Anyways, Obviously, this crossover isn't canon, because I think the kids would have mentioned meeting the Ninja Turtles in Season 3 of Stranger Things. I'd go further into the plot of the crossover, but this series came out this year, so I don't want to spoil much more. If you're interested in it, go check it out. Oh yeah, and there's also been a handful of TMNT Stranger Things action figures released as well. Dreamwave Comics when it comes to TMNT comics, most fans know about the original Mirage comics, the IDW comics, and the Archie comics. However, there's a fourth TMNT comic run that's pretty obscure. That being the Dreamwave comics run. Written by Peter David, this comic series was heavily inspired by the comic series TMNT Adventures. For those that don't know, that comic series started out as an adaptation of the 1987 cartoon, before eventually telling its own stories. This was a similar case, as it started out as an adaptation of episodes of the 2003 cartoon. But starting with issue 4, it began telling original stories. However, these original stories didn't last very long, as the series was abruptly cancelled after 7 issues. Why was it cancelled? Well, because Dreamwave Productions went bankrupt. So whatever plans they had for this series had to be cancelled. Turtle Tunes? So most TMNT fans know about We Wish You a Turtle Christmas. However, not as many fans know that Turtle Christmas was actually part of a duology. Released in 1994, and once again directed by Larry Osborne, Turtle Tunes is a 25-minute long special where the turtles just sing and dance with random children. The plot this time around is that April gives the turtles an opportunity to pitch their own variety show. So the turtles decide that singing and dancing would make for good TV. Though they do pick up garbage in New York City, so that's pretty cool I guess. Also, while frequently mentioned, April doesn't actually appear in the special. Oh yeah, and most of the songs this time around aren't original. Instead, they're parodies of children's songs. For example, instead of I've Been Working on the Railroad, they sing Skateboarding Around the Fountain. Personally, I don't really find this special to be nearly as funny as the Christmas one, but this special does reveal that Leonardo owns a rowboat because he can't swim, so uh, there's at least something of value here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 The Foot Walks Again This is another cancelled fourth installment in the original TMNT film series. However, unlike The Next Mutation, there's not actually a ton known about this cancelled film. 
Written by John Travis and Craig Shapiro, what's interesting about this film is that it seems to have been evolved from The Next Mutation, as many of the same concept drawings for The Next Mutation were also being used for The Foot Walks Again. The only other things we know about this film are that it was originally going to be released in summer of 1996, and would have dealt with the Turtles traveling through different dimensions, one of which was gothic in nature. Also, because Evil April is seen in the concept art for the film, I guess this confirms that she would have been an alternate universe version of her instead of like the normal April turning evil or her being like an evil clone. Other than that, it seems this film was basically just an alternate version of the next mutation. The, the cancelled film, not the show. Jenica. Jenica is the fifth member of the TMNT in the IDW comics. Originally part of the Foot Clan, she would eventually defect to the Street Phantoms. This was because she wasn't really a fan of Splinter leading the Foot Clan. Uh, yeah, Splinter was the leader of the Foot Clan for a bit, and the Turtles were part of the Foot Clan. Anyways, Splinter was like, hey, stop being cringe. You can be pretty cool. And that's when she realized that Splinter and the Turtles were cool. She hung out with them for a little while, even falling in love with Casey Jones, before being fatally injured by Karai. In order to save her life, Leonardo pulled a She-Hulk and had his blood transferred into her. While this did save her life, it also turned her into a mutant turtle. But she didn't immediately join the TMNT. Instead, she moved to Mutant Town, a part of New York City that houses a bunch of mutants. Although, this didn't last a while, and she would join the TMNT. She would also begin dating Sheena Murphy, a human-born pig mutant. She even went on to start her own band, called Created in Darkness. But she only did this because of a time traveler who came up to her and was like, Hey, if you don't make a band, the TMNT are going to lose sight of themselves and all be killed by the Foot Clan. In all fairness, if a time traveler came up to me and told me that if I didn't start a band, my family and friends would be killed by ninjas, I'd start a band. As for Jenica's weapons, she usually uses clawed gloves, inspired by a Teko Kagi. Unlike how Venus was originally received, Jenica has actually been received quite well, and has starred in three different comic miniseries. The TMNT Oprah Winfrey episode. In 1990, in order to promote the Coming Out of Their Shells tour, the TMNT in April did an entire 40 minute long interview with Oprah Winfrey. While they did play some of their songs, the highlight of this special was Oprah Winfrey asking the Turtles some very interesting questions, like whether or not the TMNT would like April to be a turtle. To which, Raph says, Oprah, I've been trying to talk her into an interspecies relationship for months now. Whoa, whoa, Raph, chill, man. The biggest problem is she can't hold her breath long enough, you know? <laughs> well, okay, coming up, the turtles are... I think these two kids speak for everyone. We also get some more lore about this universe, like how Donatello is the one who created all the instruments. Also, Shredder shows up and, uh, yes, begins insulting even more children. I think this might be my favorite version of Shredder. John Fusco's TMNT film. In July 2009, John Fusco was hired by Mirage Studios, Time Warner, and 4Kids to write a live-action TMNT film set for release in 2011. The film would have been a direct sequel to the original 1990 film and ignored the events of 2 and 3. The film would have also used animatronic suits that would have been enhanced with CGI. The Turtles' origins would have also been explored further in depth in the film. And finally, the movie was set to be dark and gritty, being heavily inspired by the original comics and Batman Begins. However, in October of 2009, Nickelodeon purchased the rights to the TMNT, and so, Paramount was now in charge of the film, and they really didn't like the script, throwing it out because it was too edgy. 
although both Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird seemed to quite like it. But sadly, Paramount had the final word, and the film was cancelled. Ghostbusters Written by Tom Waltz and Eric Burnham, and released from October 2014 to January of 2015, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ghostbusters is a four-issue crossover miniseries that sees the TMNT teaming up with the original Ghostbusters team to battle some spooky ghosts. What's interesting about this crossover is that it's actually canon to both the IDW TMNT universe and the IDW Ghostbusters universe. Basically, the Turtles, April, and Casey Jones end up being transported to the Ghostbusters dimension, where they gotta team up with the Paranormal Busters in order to defeat Chi Yu, an immortal demon who possesses Casey Jones in an attempt at taking over the entire world. The two parties free Casey and defeat the spooky Chinese Emperor Demon. Well, he's a demon in the story. I don't think he's actually a demon in Chinese mythology. But yeah, he's defeated. Upon capturing him, instead of placing him in the Ghostbusters containment unit, Egon sends him through a dimensional portal, which results in him landing 4.2 light years away from the Earth, in the TMNT's dimension. So I guess he's now a space ghost. Two years later, a sequel was released throughout November of 2017. This crossover was five issues long, and dealt with the TMNT and Ghostbusters teaming up once again to battle some more ghosts. This time around, the Turtles are stuck in the Ghost Dimension, which requires the Ghostbusters to come and rescue them. They then split up to battle various different threats, and uh, they end up meeting some really weird beings, like the Ghostbusters, which are a team of Turtle Ghostbusters. They're not mutant turtles, they're like from a Zootopia or BNA kind of world. Yeah, these crossovers are pretty wild. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. Hey, Joey! I got some stuff you just gotta try. What is it? Chug Jug, you know Fortnite? Oh, well, I don't know. What, chicken? Joey's in a jam. What should he do? Uh, cake. Get a pizza. Excellent. Get a pizza. Get real. Get you got it. Let's see if Joey's that smart. Uh, I'm not chicken. You're a turkey. He's right. Drug dealers are dorks. Don't even talk to them. We now return to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Poster controversy. In Australia, a poster for the 2014 TMNT film was released that caused a bit of controversy. The poster featured the turtles jumping out of an exploding skyscraper with text reading September 11th, as that was the film's release date. You can probably see why this caused an issue. Paramount quickly apologized for the poster, and it was quickly removed. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 Released in September of 2015 for the PS4 and Xbox One, and December of 2015 for the PS3 and Xbox 360, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is probably the most infamous skateboarding game ever made. Why? Because it's really bad and nearly killed the entire franchise. But that's a topic for a completely different iceberg that I won't be making because I don't really care about skateboarding games. Sorry. Anyways, the TMNT appear in the game as guest characters, along with various other characters like Sackboy, Ratchet, Cuphead, Sweet Tooth, Tyler the Creator, and Octodad. I completely forgot that game exists. This wouldn't be the last time the TMNT would appear in a skateboarding game, though, as in 2023, the TMNT from Mutant Mayhem were added into the game Session Skate Sim along with a TMNT-style map to skate around in. Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 So the 2019 Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film was a fairly decent hit, and so the film's producer, Ben Jones, and the film's writer, Mary Hall Pern Grazier, began talking about a sequel to the film that would include Bebop and Rocksteady along with Krang. 
Sadly, while the people behind the film are open to doing another one, it doesn't seem like DC, Warner Bros, or Nickelodeon are very interested in the idea. Which is very weird because the film literally ends with a cliffhanger where Shredder becomes Jokerfied. Baxter Stockman in Secrets of the Ooze. Originally, the main antagonist of Secrets of the Ooze wasn't going to be Shredder, Toka, and Razar, but instead, Baxter Stockman, who would have created an army of Mausers to fight the Turtles. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were both on board with the idea, as they didn't want Shredder to appear in the second film. They wanted Shredder's fate to be left ambiguous throughout the second film, so when he returns in the third film, it would be a big deal. However, there were two major issues with this plan. The first was that the film's producers wanted the film to be a lot closer to the cartoon, so Shredder had to be in it. And the studio couldn't actually create the robotic Mausers due to time and budget reasons. Keep in mind, Secrets of the Ooze came out almost exactly a year after the first film, so they didn't have any time to waste during production. Because of these reasons and the film's tone, Peter Laird has actually said that besides the Michael Bay produced films, this is his least favorite TMNT film. Fast Forward 2 One of the original ideas for the seventh season of the 2003 TMNT series was an entire second season of Fast Forward. This season would have seen the Dark Turtles teaming up with the Ninja Turtles to battle the Tech Turtles, a group of robotic Ninja Turtles created by Darius Dunn. Future versions of Leatherhead and Usagi would have also been introduced. And finally, the Turtles would go up against yet another new Shredder, this one being called the tri Shreditron. Although this wouldn't be that new of a Shredder, as it would have been revealed that this was the Utrum Shredder taking over the body of a Triceraton. While this second season was cancelled, ten episodes from Season 2 were released via animatics on 4Kids' website. Garfield In 1992, Jim Davis, of Garfield fame, was brought on board to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles magazine to write a little joke comic where Garfield meets the Ninja Turtles. This one-page crossover features Garfield attempting to infiltrate the Ninja Turtles' lair in order to steal their pizza, under the name Garfello. He might have gotten away with it if it wasn't for Odie, who shows up not wearing his costume right. So the Turtles beat the crap out of Garfield and throw him onto the streets of New York. Rejected Warner Bros. Series In 2001, Mirage Studios pitched a TMNT cartoon to Warner Bros. that would either air on Kids WB or Cartoon Network. This cartoon would have featured the four Turtles, Shredder, April, Baxter Stockman, Splinter, Casey Jones, and the Triceratons as prominent characters. There was also the original character, Gray Jacobs. I have no idea what he would have done on the show. Despite a ton of concept art being created for the series, and an animatic pilot being created, Warner Bros. rejected the cartoon. However, because they rejected the cartoon, Mirage Studios moved on to Fox and pitched a TMNT series there. And thus, the 2003 TMNT cartoon was born. TMNT 2003 Theme Song Contest Prior to the release of the final season of the 2003 cartoon, a contest was held to choose the theme song for the final season. Six themes were created, and fans could vote for the theme song on the 4Kids website. Thankfully, while promotional material for this contest seems to be lost to time, all six theme songs have been archived. Obviously, I can't play them here, but uh, some of them are really bad. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. They also created three joke theme songs. These themes were created by Michelangelo, and uh, they... they exist. I'll leave them linked in the description below as well. John Woo's TMNT Film 
In 2001, it was announced that John Woo was directing a CGI TMNT film with a budget of $50 million. It was confirmed by Peter Laird that this film would be darker and edgier than the last two TMNT films. And uh, that's all we know. No, really. The film was in development hell for a while until John Woo left the project sometime in 2003 or 2004. Afterwards, Kevin Monroe would be hired to direct and write the film, and this of course led to TMNT 2007. Archie In 1991, Archie Comics created a crossover between the TMNT franchise and the Archie franchise. This was a 64-page crossover that was a bit of a lie. You see, while the comic cover makes you think that the entire book is about the two franchises crossing over, that's not the case. This was actually an anthology comic that featured various short stories set in both franchises. And only the first story was a crossover. The crossover short stories called Green Legs and Gams, and has the turtles being transported to Archie's dimension via Cuddly the Cowlick, who I will talk about a bit later. So the turtles arrive in Riverdale just in time to help Archie and his friends save Veronica, who's been kidnapped by people claiming to be from the IRS. Also, Josie and the Pussycats are here, so it's like a three-way crossover, although they don't really do anything. Anyways, the turtles save the day while also being mistaken as aliens and frogs several times. They also never go back to their dimension, so I guess they decided to live here and hope that Splinter, April, and Casey Jones can stop Shredder by themselves. Out of the Shadows video game Released in August of 2013 for the Xbox 360 and PC, and April 2014 for the PS3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, no relation to the 2016 film, is a hack-and-slash video game notable for its mediocrity and the fact that it's extremely hard to play now. But I'll get into that in a few. Developed by Redfly Studio, the game is heavily influenced by the 2012 animated series. This is most notable in its designs, like the Krang Soldiers and Splinter. The game's campaign has you playing as the four turtles as they battle various foes like Shredder, Karai, Krang, and Baxter Stockman, who are developing new weapons built from Krang's technology in Dimension X. You could either battle them alone or with your friends, as the game allowed for four-player online co-op and two-player local co-op. There was also an arcade mode, which allowed players to do combat challenges. Like I said earlier, the game wasn't well received, with critics and players alike calling the game boring and uninspired. A lot of people also criticized the game's art style and its short length. That's not to say that everyone hated this game, but it wasn't very popular. Funny enough, there's actually quite a few people who want to play the game now. This is because in January of 2017, the game was delisted from all online stores. And because this was a digital-only release, it means it's now impossible to buy copies of this game. The only people who can actually play it are those who already bought it. The Next Mutation Season 2 The Next Mutation is the only TMNT series to have lasted one season. But that wasn't the original plan. During production of Season 1, there were talks of making a second season that would have introduced April O'Neil and Casey Jones, and also killed off Splinter. Shredder would have also returned in some capacity. However, the second season was cancelled due to the show being pretty expensive to make. At least expensive compared to the other shows that Saban was creating. Also, there were rumors about the second season being animated instead of being live-action. Take this entry with a grain of salt, however, as I can't actually find any direct evidence for these claims. All I can find is people talking about these plans and claiming they're true. Lady Shredder First appearing in TMNT issue 22, released in March of 1999, 
Lady Shredder showed up to fight the turtles, do a bit of trolling, and, uh, well, that's it. You see, before she could get any development, the comic was cancelled at issue 23. Not only did she not get any development, but she also just didn't have her identity revealed. And so for 21 years, fans theorized who Lady Shredder could have been. Eventually, fans would get an answer, as in July 2020, IDW began publishing a three-part miniseries that served as a direct continuation of the Image Comics continuity. And it's here that the mystery behind Lady Shredder was finally revealed. It turns out, she's a nanotech AI who took control over Karai's daughter, Amai's body. However, this wasn't her only backstory. In 2011, TMNT fan Andrew Modine hired various artists and writers to help him create his own continuation of the Image Comics continuity. Not only that, but he also used notes from Gary Carlson, the writer of the original comic, while writing these issues. Keep in mind, though, this was just a fan comic. It wasn't official. Anyways, in this continuity, Lady Shredder is Tang Amaya, aka Mistress. But neither of these were the original plan for Lady Shredder. It turns out that in the 1990s, while they were making the original comic, Lady Shredder was going to be revealed as Karai. While she didn't become Lady Shredder in these comics, Karai would take up the mantle of Shredder in various different continuities. New Live Action Film so this might age poorly, or age well. While most people seem to think that Mutant Mayhem is the future of the TMNT series, well, they're right, for the most part. Mutant Mayhem is getting a sequel and some TV spin-offs. However, there's actually plans for another TMNT film unrelated to Mutant Mayhem to be released in theaters. In August of 2021, it was announced that Paramount was working on a new live-action TMNT film with Colin Jost and Casey Jost writing the script. And it was also confirmed that Michael Bay was returning as one of the film's producers. Whether or not this film actually gets made after the success of Mutant's Mayhem is a bit of a mystery. He-Man TMNT this is a cancelled comic crossover that would have been written by Tim Seeley. It would have featured characters from the TMNT franchise and the He-Man franchise, and would have been published by IDW and DC Comics. As for the plots of the crossover, there's very little known about it. All we know is that the Turtles, Splinter, and April would team up with He-Man and friends to battle the combined forces of Shredder and Skeletor. The Turtles would have traveled to He-Man's dimension, where they would have also started using weapons and armor from said universe. He-Man would also get a ninja makeover. And sadly, that's pretty much all we know about this comic's plot, as the crossover was never actually announced, and was only revealed to have been in production via Freddie E. Williams II's Twitter account. He revealed that the crossover was actually delayed twice, and then cancelled in 2020. So why was it cancelled? Well, there hasn't been an official reason. Although, because it was cancelled in 2020, it's very possible it may have had something to do with COVID-19, as various comics at the time were being delayed or flat-out cancelled due to the pandemic. TMNT Overload this is a cancelled version of the original seventh season of TMNT 2003. Overload would have been about the Turtles escaping the future, but instead of returning to the present day, they would accidentally be sent into the past due to some villains messing with their time machine. And in the past, they would meet their younger selves. They would then return to the present, however, their younger selves would have also been sent to the present with them. So the Turtles would have had to fight crime with their toddler selves in the present day. Cyber Shredder would have also been the season's main villain, and would have taken over the entire internet. This pitch for the seventh season was created by four kids, 
and was actually approved by Mirage Studios. The only reason the season didn't happen was because of Playmates Toys, the toy company making, well, toys for the show. They rejected the pitch, as they were afraid that kids would be confused by two versions of the TMNT working together. 35 Days of Kevin Eastman Announced in 2013, 35 Days of Kevin Eastman is a cancelled documentary about Kevin Eastman, one of the TMNT's creators. It was supposed to go over Kevin Eastman's career and life following the creation of the TMNT, with interviews with the man himself. It was being written and directed by Digger T. Mesh, and was seemingly cancelled because of Mesh's busy schedule. Although, while I say the documentary is cancelled, there actually hasn't been an announcement of its cancellation. In fact, its IMDb page even has a release date. Although, I can't actually find any information about this film being released. There is a video on YouTube called 35 Days of Kevin Eastman at Meltdown Comics TMT Mural, which follows the creation of a mural at Meltdown Comics. This was actually part of the inspiration for the documentary, as this mural was part of an art exhibit showcasing Kevin Eastman's work in 2011 at Meltdown Comics. If anyone has any more information about this documentary, please let me know in the comments below. The Fight for the Fox Box This is a strange half-hour-long crossover between various franchises that aired on the Fox Box. The Fox Box was the original name for 4Kids TV, so it's basically just a giant 4Kids crossover. Well, kinda. It is a crossover, but it's made up of reused animation and dubbed over clips. The plot has Wayne Cramp from the Cramp Twins giving Shredder, Dr. Eggman from Sonic X, King DDD from Kirby Right Back At Ya, Diabolic from Ultimate Muscle, and Dr. K from Cubix, Robots for Everyone, broadcast codes to their shows so that Fox can't air any other Foxbox shows, meaning that they win or something. They say in the special that they could just, like, win every week, like, they could win every episode against the, the good guys. But, like, that's not how broadcast codes work, so I don't really know what the plan here was. Anyways, the heroes of each of these shows discover this devious plot and go out and stop the bad guys. And when they beat up one of the villains, a code appears on screen. Kids would then go to the website SaveTheFoxBox.com to enter these codes in order to stop the villain's plans. The fight for the Fox Box was ultimately just a marketing tactic to advertise the block that would become 4Kids TV. However, it did actually receive a DVD release via promotions with various magazines. As for the Turtles' involvement in the special, it's revealed that Michelangelo is a huge fan of Ultimate Muscle, and Raphael loves Kirby Right Back At Ya so much he'll kill people if he doesn't get to watch it. If I miss this week's Kirby, heads are gonna roll! Cyborg Donatello So right as the Image Comics continuity began, Donatello got annihilated by a bunch of cyborgs. He only survived because he was able to merge with one of the cyborgs who shot him. This had some pros and cons. Pros included Donatello now having a bunch of robotic weapons, having insane accuracy, and of course he's a lot tougher. Cons included uh, constantly being on the verge of losing his mind and having the cyborg take control over his body. And also, he was now extremely aggressive. Not sure if this was an equal trade-off, but uh, it was definitely a trade-off. His cyborg body also had the ability to transform into various things. For example, during a period of time where Donatello was separated from his body, his mind was able to morph his body into whatever he was thinking about. Sounds neat at first, but it's extremely easy to mess up. As when Donatello thought of Shredder for just a brief moment, his body morphed into the figure of Shredder. Donatello would stay as a cyborg throughout the comic. However, he would eventually be cured in the IDW sequel comics that finished up the story. 
Although, when he was healed from his injuries, he still had remnants of his cyborg body. For example, having a metallic shell. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles vs. Street Fighter Releasing from June 2023 to November of the same year, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles vs. Street Fighter is a five-issue crossover miniseries written by Paul Aller that sees the Ninja Turtles entering a martial arts tournament in Atlantic City. Here, they face off against various Street Fighter characters, like Chun-Li and Ryu, before eventually teaming up with them to take down Shredder, Baxter Stockman, and M. Bison. This comic was created to tie in with the TMNT Street Fighter VI collab I mentioned earlier. However, it's not actually canon to the Street Fighter universe. It's in its own little continuity, separate from Street Fighter and all the previous TMNT incarnations. I'd go further into detail about the plot, but it literally just wrapped up last month, so if you're interested, go check it out. Scrapped 1980s Live Action Film In 1987, New World Pictures pitched a film adaptation of TMNT. However, this film pitch was rejected very quickly. The film would star Billy Crystal, Bobcat Goldthwait, Sam Kinison, and Gallagher as the TMNT, and they would have worn really cheap-looking shell costumes and would have been painted green. They would battle a bunch of villains, including a gang of roller-skating naked nuns wielding Uzis. Yeah, this film was going to be pretty weird. It would have been a straight-up comedy and be rated R. For those that don't know, New World Pictures is a pretty infamous studio co-founded by Roger Corman. They're known for making extremely cheap films. Their most notable work being Carnosaur and the 1990s Fantastic Four film. Anyways, you can probably see why this film was rejected really quickly. Raphael Shredder In the Image Comics TMNT continuity, the series began with the Turtles and the Foot Clan having a truce. And because of this truce, Raphael actually became friends with various members of the Foot Clan, even going on various missions with them. However, the Foot Clan eventually ends up kidnapping Casey Jones' adopted daughter and hands her over to Big Tony, the head of the New York mob. But the Foot Clan then asks Raphael to go and rescue Casey's daughter and kill Big Tony. While Raphael fails at both of these tasks, Big Tony is extremely mad and starts a war with the Foot Clan. And so one day, when Raphael is just chilling out with the Foot Clan, the mob attacks and massacres a bunch of the Foot Clan's top members. Raphael retreats for a bit and discovers Shredder's armor. He puts it on and uses it to slaughter the entire mob. This gains him the respect of most of the Foot Clan, who ask him to lead them. And Raph's just like, Okay, sure, why not? So yeah, Raphael becomes Shredder for a bit. And surprisingly, the rest of the Turtles are kinda cool with it. Like, they don't love it, but they don't hate it either. At first, they do think that the Shredder kidnapped Raph, but after the situation is explained, Leonardo is just like, Hey, can I help you train the Foot Clan? But Raph tells him no, because he's afraid the Foot Clan would be confused by having two bosses. The Turtles and the Foot Clan even team up occasionally to go on missions. While the Turtles are somewhat cool with him being Shredder, Splinter's not and he flat out tells Raphael that he failed him as both a father and a teacher. Raphael is eventually forced out of the Foot Clan when he refuses to kill Shredder's daughter, as the rest of the Foot Clan sees this as weak behavior. And uh, just like that, he's back to being an enemy of the Foot Clan. Scrapped 2001 CGI Show in 2001, Rainbow Studios created a five-minute-long test pilot for a TMNT cartoon. They did this to try and sell the show to networks. However, nobody was interested in the pitch. The cartoon was created using CGI and features the Turtles battling various enemies, ranging from the Foot Clan, Triceratons, Mausers, and the Shredder. The trailer doesn't really give away much of the plot of the cartoon, 
This is because there really wasn't a plot. In fact, the scenes in the trailer weren't going to be in the actual show, if it was made. This pilot was created essentially to like show how the show would have like looked. Luckily, there were a few posters created alongside this pitch pilot that have been archived, and these posters reveal some pretty interesting tidbits about the show. For example, if this show was made, there wouldn't be a leader of the TMNT, as Leonardo is described as being the unofficial leader. Donatello is also mentioned to be a pacifist, and Casey Jones' poster mentions New York going bad. So this presumably means that New York City has become rampant with crime. Also, the turtles have tails. Didn't really know where to put that, just wanted to mention it. While this show never got picked up, elements of it would be incorporated into future projects. Most notably the 2003 cartoon, as the turtle van and the Foot Clan logo seen in the pitch pilot look extremely similar to how they do in the show we actually got. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rock and roll! And only Pizza Hut has their great new cassette with 10 bodacious Ninja Turtle tunes. Get a cassette for your kids for just $3.99. Hey, act fast and get a most excellent autograph poster. An official tour book absolutely free. But hurry, because this is one rock and roll deal that's too awesome to miss. We now return to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Splinter was supposed to die at the beginning of the 2012 series. One of the earliest ideas for the 2012 series was that Splinter was going to die extremely early into the show. This was an idea the show's executive producer, Ciro Neely, came up with. Basically, this would have been the reason why the Turtles left the sewers to fight crime. There's a very good chance that this would have ended up being in the show if not for Nickelodeon stepping in, as having the main character's father dying so early into a show was seen as very risky. Leonardo's Yellow Bandana During development of Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation, it was decided to have Leonardo retire his blue bandana for a yellow bandana. This was because Saban were worried that kids would somehow confuse Leonardo and Venus, since Venus had a cyan bandana. So a yellow bandana was made for Leo, and was even seen in early promotional images for the show. However, it was eventually decided to just make Leonardo's blue bandana a darker shade. No idea why they couldn't have just given Venus the yellow bandana, but whatever I guess. Foot Clan Origins In June 2020, it was revealed by Eric Robles on Twitter that in 2015, he was working on a TMNT series called Foot Clan Origins. As the name suggests, the show would have explored the origins of the Foot Clan, and would have starred a young Shredder and Splinter working together as orphaned street kids who would eventually create the Foot Clan. Now this, obviously, wouldn't have been canon to the 2012 series, and would have been set in its own continuity. Surprisingly, this wasn't inspired by the IDW series, The Secret History of the Foot Clan. The show didn't really get too far into production, however, as Nickelodeon rejected the pitch. Turtles Training Lair Connect Game Released in July 2014 exclusively for the Xbox 360 Kinect, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Training Lair is a short promotional Kinect game created to promote the 2014 film. Developed by Float Hybrid and Chrome Studios, the game has you slicing random objects using your body to unlock photo backgrounds to take pictures with that you can share on Facebook. It was basically just a Fruit Ninja clone created for the Kinect that you could beat in just under 8 minutes. But hey, it was free, so I guess you can't complain too much. The game was delisted from online stores in July of 2015, 
so you can't actually play this game anymore. Honestly, the best part about this game is the insane amount of Pizza Hut promos. Seriously, the Pizza Hut logos are just everywhere in this game. The production team hated Dog Pound. During development of the first season of the 2012 TMNT cartoon, the production team began to hate the character of Dog Pound. Or I guess, hate isn't the right word. It's more like the writers just weren't clicking with the character. So it was decided to kill him off in Season 2. However, it was eventually decided not to kill him off, but to instead rework the character into an incarnation of Razar, a character that the production team had wanted to include in the show since the very beginning. So in a weird way, if Razar wasn't created for Secret of the Ooze, Dog Pound would have died in Season 2. Super World one of the earliest versions of the seventh season of the 2003 TMNT cartoon was a season called Super World, which would have had the Turtles playing a card game. It was pitched by four kids, and uh, that's it. I have no other information on this show. All the information there is online is that the Turtles would have played a card game. I can only imagine that this was going to promote an in-real-life card game of sorts. Shinsho dies in the French version of the 1990s film. So Shinsho is an extremely minor character in the 1990 TMNT film. He's mostly known, well, no, he's pretty much only known, for getting beaten almost to death by another member of the Foot Clan. However, he was originally going to die due to this beating. But due to this being pretty dark, a single line of dialogue was added into the film during post-production to imply his survival. This is in every version of the film, except the French version. For some reason, in the French dub of the film, the line of dialogue implying that he survived was removed. So yeah, I guess in this version of the film, the kid dies. Friday the 13th Part 9 Heroes in a Slash Shell So here's a huge goof from me. Back in 2015, I stumbled upon an article on Bloody Disgusting called Five Friday the 13ths That Almost Were, and one of these cancelled films they talked about was called Friday the 13th Part 9, Heroes in a Slash Shell. This film was going to be a crossover between the live-action Ninja Turtles and the Friday the 13th film series. This actually works because Part 8 ends with Jason... I think dying in New York City? I don't really know what happened at the end of that film. Fun movie, though. Anyways, the article, written by Daniel Baldwin, goes over the entire plot of the film. I thought that this was a pretty interesting cancelled film. And so, for eight years, I thought this film was actually at one point in production. So when I was researching for this iceberg, I knew I had to talk about it. The only place where this film was mentioned was this article. And it turns out, I didn't read all of it. Because it's very obviously a joke article. I mean, the article flat out says the film was released. So I'll leave a link to the article below, it's a fun read. I just wanted to put this in the video because of how dumb I was. Good work, Daniel Baldwin. You tricked me for eight entire years. Though I guess I deserve this for tricking a kid into thinking that Nocturne Toten was based off of real events. Rejected Casey Jones Film In February of 2023, Jason Eisner revealed on Twitter that he had pitched a Casey Jones solo film in 2018. This wouldn't have been connected to the recent Michael Bay produced films, and would have instead be a kind of sequel to the original film series. Maybe. He said that the film would have seen Casey Jones battling Shredder and Karai, and he would have teamed up with Raphael in the film's final act, and Raph would have been designed after the original 1990 film. So maybe it would have been a sequel of sorts? 
though there's a very good chance that it would have just been a homage to the original films. It wouldn't have actually been canon. Anyways, Jason Eisner linked a tone reel he used to pitch the film to Paramount, with clips from various films. It seems that this Casey Jones film would have had a tone similar to films like The Raid 2, Good Time, You Were Never Really Here, and Maniac Cop. Its serious tone was probably one of the reasons why Paramount rejected the pitch. Mitsu in Tournament Fighters So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 is probably the most forgotten TMNT film, and that's because, outside of the ending of TMNT 2007, the film hasn't really been referenced and aspects of the film haven't returned in any show or film. Think about it. Secrets of the Ooze at least introduced Toka and Razar, who have gone on to appear in other stuff. And sure, TMNT 2007 hasn't really had a ton of influence on future incarnations, but it at least had several video game tie-ins. TMNT 3 is just kind of there. But that wasn't originally going to be the case. Beta builds of the SNES version of TMNT Torment Fighters have revealed that the character Asuka was originally going to be Mitsu, a character created for TMNT 3. She's even referred to as Mitsu in the game's design documents. However, because of the film's reception, it was decided to replace Mitsu with a brand new character. Crazy that TMNT 3 was originally going to have rep in one of the most beloved TMNT games. Professor Perry is an Utram. Professor Perry, a character from Secrets of the Ooze, was going to be revealed in the film's final scene as an Utram. Now this scene was cut because the studio were afraid that kids would get him confused with Krang. However, despite removing this scene from the film, they still kept in all of the foreshadowing. So if you ever wondered why Professor Perry immediately knew how the turtles got mutated, and why he said weird lines like, Sometimes, the best way to hide is right out in public. Well, now you know. He was supposed to be a Neutrum. 2013 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game? Developed by Magic Pockets, and released for the Wii, Xbox 360, and Nintendo 3DS in October of 2013, TMNT 2013 is a tie-in video game created for the 2012 cartoon series. The game's plot is pretty simple. The Turtles are chilling out with April when they discover that the Foot Clan have built a hydrogen bomb. I mean, I mean a mutagen bomb. Could you imagine a Nickelodeon tie-in video game where you gotta stop Shredder from dropping a hydrogen bomb on New York City? Anyways, the Turtles head out to stop the bad guys and to rescue April, who got captured. During their adventure, they battle Shredder, Dog Pound, Baxter Stockman, Fish Face, and a whole bunch of Krangs. Karai's there too, but she doesn't fight the Turtles. The game is an extremely simple brawler, with only six levels. Surprisingly, you can actually upgrade the turtles using points you collect. Although, I guess it's not that surprising. I mean, there's an upgrade system in Rise of Kong. The game allows for four-player co-op, and it's all offline. Though, if you play the game solo, you could swap between the turtles whenever you want, like it's a LEGO game. As for the game's reception, it wasn't good. In fact, this might be the worst received Turtles game out there. Now you're probably wondering why the game was only on the Wii, Xbox 360, and 3DS. Seems kinda random for the game not to be on the PS3. Well, a PS3 version of the game was in development, along with a Wii U version. However, due to the game's reception and horrible sales, both of these versions were cancelled. Sadly, despite all of this, nobody's done like a big in-depth review of the game. Can somebody please make that video? Uh, thank you in advance. April O'Neil's Jumpsuit in the 1990 film As a huge fan of the classic 80s cartoon April O'Neil look, it's really annoying that there hasn't been a live-action TMNT project where April's seen wearing her yellow jumpsuit along with her white boots. 
official project, but we were originally going to get it in the very first live action film. While the jumpsuit was never part of the film's costume designer's plans, while on set, it was decided that April should have the jumpsuit. But there was a bit of an issue. They didn't have one. So instead of trying to find a yellow jumpsuit, the production team decided to just dye a white jumpsuit. April's original actress, Judith Hogue, tried on the jumpsuit when it was white, and it fit pretty well. However, upon dyeing the jumpsuit, the costume shrunk, which made the jumpsuit extremely uncomfortable to wear, and made it fairly revealing. So it was decided to scrap the suit entirely, though there would be a nod to it with April's yellow raincoat. Recently, though, a figure of April from the 1990 film wearing a yellow jumpsuit was announced. So I guess after three decades, we're finally going to get to see her with that outfit. Getting down in your town. From 1992 to 1993, a second TMNT concert toured around the United States. This one being titled, Getting Down in Your Town. Serving as a sequel to Coming Out of Their Shells, this concert had a much lower budget, which means worse costumes and fewer characters. It also exclusively toured in Six Flags amusement parks, which is why it's rather obscure. This time around, Splinter, April, and Baxter Stockman don't appear. Instead, the Turtles face off against Shredder with the help of a very hairy Casey Jones. Or should I say they have Casey fight Shredder for them? As they don't actually fight Shredder, they just chill around and guilt trip Casey Jones about him not being in the first concert. Anyways, like with coming out of their shells, this concert was recorded and released as a VHS tape. However, there's actually some lost media from this concert, because the entire concert wasn't recorded. Certain scenes of the show couldn't be recorded due to union concerns. Basically, every time Casey Jones takes off his mask and interacts with the audience, were removed from the VHS recording. So yeah, this concert isn't as charming as the original, but it's still got some highlights. Like how Shredder claims to have a VHS tape containing footage of the Turtles committing various severe crimes. Pre-teen Dirty Jean Kung Fu Kangaroos Pre-teen Dirty Jean Kung Fu Kangaroos is a very obscure, short-lived comic written by Lee Mars. Running for only three issues, this series is really only notable for a single page in the first issue. This issue, released in August of 1986, briefly features Donatello, drawn by Peter Laird. In this story, Donatello is seen giving the preteen Dirty Jean Kung Fu Kangaroos directions. So why did Donatello make a cameo? Well, it's because the preteen Dirty Jean Kung Fu Kangaroos series was actually a parody of the original Mirage Team and T comics. April O'Neil Turtle. So in the Archie TMNT comics continuity, April O'Neil made Turtles history when she became the first female mutant turtle in the franchise. In TMNT Adventures Special Issue 11, released in 1994, April is temporarily transformed into a mutant turtle after some aliens spray her with some mutagen. Shortly after turning into a mutant turtle, she heads over to the TMNT's lair and informs them that some aliens are trying to invade Earth while disguising themselves as the company Merge Enterprises. And the turtles are pretty taken aback by the whole thing. Taking up a sword and a white bandana, she joins the rest of the turtles as they go after the aliens. And after a pretty tough battle, the aliens flee the planet, and April is transformed back into her human form. The Mighty Mute Animals Animated Series In 1992, Mirage Studios pitched a cartoon to Ruby Spears Productions. This cartoon would be an adaptation of The Mighty Mute Animals, a team of characters only created a year prior. For those that don't know, The Mighty Mute Animals are a superhero group that occasionally works with the TMNT. This show would have also been a spin-off of the 80s Turtle cartoon, 
and would have had Krang as the main antagonist. Though he wouldn't be the only antagonist, as he would be working with the character Maligna. And because it was going to take place in the same universe as the original cartoon, the Turtles were planned to make guest appearances in the show's four-part premiere. The show's first season was planned to go on for 13 episodes. However, those episodes would never enter production, as Ruby Spears Productions eventually turned down the series. Operation Blue Line Released in July of 1990 and sponsored by the Southern California Rapid Transportation District, Operation Blue Line is a 10-minute short film released via promotional VHS tapes. The story is quite simple. The Turtles have to take on the villainous Gridlock, who seeks to make sure the people of California don't know about the RTD Metro Blue Line. Why? I don't know, he, he's just kind of a troll. Anyways, the Turtles show up, travel the RTD Metro Blue Line, talk about the RTD Metro Blue Line, promote the RTD Metro Blue Line, and finally defeat Gridlock. Outside of the RTD Metro Blue Line. Out of all the official live-action TMNT specials, this one has the lowest budget, as the suits used for the Turtles are very cheap compared to the Turtle Tunes and Concert Suits, which is saying a lot. I mean, their mouths don't even open. Surprisingly, the Turtles cartoon voice cast reprise their roles, and the film ends with some sequel bait, as Gridlock swears vengeance on the Turtles. Though it's been like 30 years and he hasn't actually done anything, so I think it's safe to say the RTD Metro Blue Line is safe. Side note, gotta love the Domino's Pizza Boxes just chilling in the background. Never stop the grind, Turtles. Savage Dragon Created by Eric Larson for Megaton Issue 3, released in February of 1986, Kerr, aka the Savage Dragon, is a superhero who exists in the Image Comics universe, and has crossed over with the Turtles various times. Their first outing together was in Savage Dragon Issue 2, where the Turtles teamed up with them to take on the Living Gargoyle. This led to another crossover in September of 1993, where they battled a sorceress named Virago. They then teamed up in another crossover, released in August of 1995, where they battle a clone of Complete Carnage. This story would continue in Savage Dragon Issue 22, released in September of 1995. The Turtles would then go on to briefly appear alongside a variety of other characters, like Superman, the Fantastic Four, Batman, the Sinister Six, Daredevil, Wolverine, Hellboy, Marge Simpson, and the Wildcats in Savage Dragon Issue 41, where they attended a wedding. And finally, in issues 10 and 11 of the Image TMNT comic, released in July and October of 1997, Savage Dragon shows up to help the Turtles deal with the villain Death Watch. Ultimate TMNT One of the earlier ideas for the seventh season of the 2003 cartoon was Ultimate TMNT. This season would have actually been a reboot, where after the events of Fast Forward, somehow, the 2003 cartoon, the 90s live-action films, the 80s cartoon, and the Archie comic series would all merge into one universe. This was proposed by Playmates Toys, but was rejected by 4Kids and Mirage Studios, probably because it would have been a continuity nightmare trying to merge them all together. So the idea was rejected, and we eventually got back to the sewer. Cancelled Hallmark Channel Movie in September of 2001, it was announced that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would be getting a television miniseries on the Hallmark Channel, directed by Steve Barron. That's right, the Hallmark Channel, also known as the White Entertainment Channel. This miniseries would have consisted of two two-hour-long episodes, so together, it would clock in at about four hours. This miniseries would have been darker than the original film series, and to take heavy influence from the original Mirage comics. And the Turtles would be CGI. Development of the miniseries continued until 2003, where it was confirmed by Peter Laird that the two-part event would air sometime in 2004. 
However, this never ended up happening. Though concept art for the miniseries was created by Brendan McCarthy, who shared some of it on his website. And it looks... Well, it looks interesting. One of the rumored plots for the series was that it was going to focus on the return of Shredder and the Foot Clan, and the TMNT would discover that Shredder was actually their long-lost turtle brother. No, really. The last thing we know about this miniseries was that it was intended to be a reboot, so it wouldn't have been canon with the previous three films or the next mutation. Ninjamies. Ninjamies is a species of extinct turtle. Originally discovered in 1879 and mistaken to be the fossils of a Megalania, the Ninjamies would be identified as its own dead species of turtle in 1992 by Eugene S. Gaffney. It was a pretty big turtle, with a shell length of 3 feet and 3 inches. So why am I talking about this deader-than-dead turtle? Well, it's because Gaffney named Ninjamies after the TMNT. Get it? Amis, the Latin word for turtle, combined with ninja? Don't act like you knew the Latin word for turtle off the top of your head. Cuddly the Cowlick Cuddly the Cowlick is an interdimensional entity that travels between dimensions, time, and planets whenever he wants to, and looks like a giant severed cowhead. He often serves as transportation for the turtles and the mighty mutanimals. The only way to travel with Cuddly through dimensions is if you ride inside of his mouth, so it's going to be a really weird ride. Cuddly's origins are unknown. Nobody knows where he came from. All we know is that he works for parodies of Donald Trump and Don King, Stump and Sling, who run the Intergalactic Wrestling Federation. Cuddly is also one of the few non-main TMNT characters to have appeared in multiple continuities. For example, the Archie Comics version of the character showed up in the Mirage Comics universe. While Cuddly is seemingly one of a kind, there's actually at least a few Cuddlies out there traveling the cosmos. The Mystery of the Cliffs Released in 1992, The Mystery of the Cliffs is a 20-minute long special that was actually lost to media for quite some time. You see, unlike Turtle Tunes or We Wish You a Turtle Christmas, this special was a PSA and released exclusively in schools. Commissioned by the United States Bureau of Land Management, this special had the turtles traveling to a random desert where they learned the true meaning of taking care of their natural resources and heritage sites. The plot follows the TMNT traveling to a desert, then to a cave, where they find a bunch of ancient cave drawings. Then they find Raphael, who has been taken prisoner by the Foot Clan, and then they're captured pretty easily. The turtles are about to be buried alive when suddenly the ghost of Splinter's ancient ancestor shows up and uses the power of stars to free the turtles, allowing them to kill the Foot Clan. The turtles then celebrate their victory by eating some pizza brought to them by Splinter, who collapses onto the ground and nobody really cares. Someone has failed to properly stow his gear. Pizza, dudes! <laughs> All right! <laughs> There's a lot of weird oddities with the special. For example, Splinter's ancestor is also a giant mutant rat for some reason. Also, the turtles are seen wearing their Coming Out of Their Shells concert outfits. And finally, the original cast of the 80s cartoon all reprise their roles. It's a really weird, obscure piece of Turtles media that I didn't even know existed until researching for this video. Leonardo convinces Hitler to Avengers Endgame himself? No, this is not a joke. Through a bunch of wacky shenanigans, a robot containing Hitler's brain uses a time machine to travel back in time to 1945 in order to meet up with the Austrian painter. The TMNT of the future then follow the bot and destroy it. Mustache Man then gets punched out by a future Raphael, before pulling out a gun and aiming it at the four turtles. Future Leonardo then approaches him and tells him that they're actually demons from hell 
and they've come for his brain, as they already have his soul. Austrian Crybaby then freaks out and declares that they won't get his brain, and uh, then he does what he did in real life. Wild stuff. This all happened in Dreamland Part 3, which is issue 64 of the Archie TMNT Adventures comic. And uh, that's a wrap, everyone. That's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Iceberg Completes. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of fun researching it because a lot of the things uh, on here I didn't actually know about prior to, like prior, uh, prior to researching. If, I, if my voice sounds odd, uh, it's two reasons. One, I'm recording this early in the morning, and also uh, I'm sick again because I always tend to get sick uh, during this time of the year. Uh, that all being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you, you know, leave a comment below. What, uh, you know, what your favorite entry was. Uh, you know, your favorite TMT film. You know, your little hot takes on the the franchise. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I will say that uh, next month, January of 2024, uh, there will not be an iceberg video uh, released, and that is because I kind of became burnt out after three months of uh, making these really big ones. Like the Alien Predator, uh, Wonder Woman, and uh, Team and T icebergs, all of which are two hours plus long, and like just back to back to back, constantly working on them. I haven't really had much time to do much else. Uh, so I I just kind of want to you know a little, I just want I want a little freebie, um, like a month. But I'll be back in but there will be an iceberg in February and then March, April, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just that January, I just like a just like a little break. Uh, there will still be a video in January, maybe even no, no, probably probably just one. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll announce that video uh, closer to its release, or maybe like a week or two. Not now, not now. Like give it a week or so. But uh, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy uh, the, enjoyed the video. I should uh, should say uh, next year is going to be pretty cool. Uh, we got. Uh, I, I will say this uh, for those that you know, for the, like two people that uh, stick to the end, uh, the next iceberg in February will finally be the DCEU iceberg, which is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. It was actually going to do in November, but then I realized like it wouldn't make sense for me to like do it right before Aquaman two. Like I should I should probably wait until the DCEU is like officially dead, like it's over. So uh, February that's gonna happen, and then uh, March. Uh, the Gundam Iceberg, the uni Universal Century Gundam Iceberg, uh, will finally be happening after uh, years of like pushing it back. Um, so I hope hope uh, the Gundam fans in the audience are excited for that one. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, just just know that I you know I mean if you've seen my videos you know I'm gonna accidentally mispronounce some some things but I uh, uh, hope you hope you're easy on me <laughs> this time around. Because uh, you, you, you weren't for the Evangelion one. Still aren't. Still aren't. I still get comments going like, well, you said this wrong, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, man. I don't, I don't, sp I, I'm sorry. I, I try. I try my hardest. I really do. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I've said it like 10 times. I always do this. I always do this. But yeah, um, have a good one, guys. I hope you guys had a great holiday. You know, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, Kwanzaa, all that kind of stuff. Hope you guys had a great one. And I will see you all in uh, the next year, which uh, hopefully will be better than 2023. 2023 was a bit of a wacky year, <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, guess, I mean, it was a wacky year, uh, you know, worldwide, but like for the channel, I should say 2023 was actually a pretty solid year. Pretty good year, actually. I mean, 80,000 80, subscribers, that's pretty good. But um yeah, next year, hope, hope you know, hopefully everything gets everything next year. You know, the world the world calms down, but uh, probably won't, probably won't, because it doesn't seem like it's ever gonna calm down. But I don't know. What can we do? Just gotta roll with it, you know. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next year. I'm not chicken. You're a pizza. He's right. Drug dealers are pizza.